Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, I am super excited to announce my new Udemy course on complete MLOps bootcamp with 10 plus end to end data science projects with deployment. In this video, I will be talking about this particular course, what all specific MLOps tools we have actually covered, which all end to end data science projects we have actually covered. And probably just in the upcoming 15 days, what all things more additional content will also get updated in this particular course. Along with that, uh, again, guys, uh, this was one of the most requested course by everyone, you know, from past one and a half or two months, I was getting a lot of requests. And from past one and a half month, you know, I have devoted somewhere around five to six, seven hours daily, you know, just for exploring the content, recording the content and making this particular course amazing for everyone. Okay. So let me just go ahead and share my screen and let's talk about the course now. So first of all, right now, as usual, the course price will be for $3.99 unless and until I have the Udemy coupons. Uh, and again, the link you will be able to find out in the description of this particular video. And with that link, you'll be able to buy the course in just $3.99. This entire course is for lifetime and you'll also be getting updates because I have a lot of plans because I want to cover some more projects, some more amazing projects. I'm using DAX framework. Um, I'm using Hugging Face APIs. I'm probably uh, also creating some good projects in SageMaker and all. So that will also be coming up as we go ahead. But before that, I'll be talking about what all things have been already been covered in this particular course and what all things you basically get. Okay. Now, if you go over here, these are my entire course content. So uh, here you can see Python prerequisite, Git, GitHub, complete ML flow, ML flow integration, project integration. Uh, uh, then you have this uh, deep learning NN model integration with ML flow, then DVC, DAX hub, uh, Git, DVC, ML flow, DAX hub, ML flow with AWS cloud, complete basic to advanced dockers, Airflow all these things github actions then how to create your end-to-end -end projects then end-to-end -end projects with deployment in multiple cloud platforms like azure aws everything is probably covered not only that i've also included projects with the help of uh, you can see aws SageMaker, like how you can specifically work with aws SageMaker over there because there also you'll be able to build deploy or train any pipelines itself and then you have also have grafana with postgres so that you'll be able to perform visualization and monitoring okay and not only that we have also covered the generative ai series with aws llm ops so all these are the topics over here and as i said uh, this course is for lifetime and the price right now you know for the next four days i think it is for 3.99 and whenever i get the coupon i will keep on sharing it with you but let's go ahead and deep dive more into the kind of topics that we have specifically covered okay so here you'll be able to see and if i just scroll down right these are the amazing topics that we have covered so we will be covering mlops tools like dvc ml flow uh, airflow then you have astronomer you have git github aws amazon SageMaker, github actions docker grafana MongoDB, PostgreSQL. Now this PostgreSQL and MongoDB is specifically used to create ETL pipelines and also it is used along with Grafana. So uh, at least the prerequisite is that you need to have some SQL knowledge and no SQL knowledge itself. Okay. Then you also have Python programming language. <clears throat> now the diagram that you probably see over here, let me uh, just show this particular diagram. This is uh, why MLOps is really important, you know. So here in the diagram, you'll be able to see that this is my entire uh, life cycle of a data science project. You have a data science project. We first of all go ahead with the requirement gathering. Then we probably take the next step. Uh, we take these requirements and in requirements, you will be required domain expert or product owner along with that business analyst. So this both team will probably discuss and join down all the requirements in order to solve this project. Okay. Once this requirements is done, then the next step is that all these requirements will be sent to the data analyst or data scientist team from further discussion with the domain expert and product owner. They will try to identify the data, right? So they will try to identify the data to solve this specific project. Okay. Now, in order to identify the data, uh, you know, obviously they will be dependent on some internal data, right? Like the company may be having the data. Along with that, they may also have dependencies on some cloud or third party APIs, right? It can be also IoT devices, right? Once they specifically identify and over here, you will be knowing that data analyst or data scientist along with the domain expert or product owner will be required because the product owner will be knowing like what all data will be specifically required in order to solve this particular project. Uh, so the domain expert will come over here. The technical expert will come from this team and then they will finally be able to identify. 
Now, once they identify the multiple data sources from where uh, data source needs to be from where data needs to be collected, then the next step goes to big data engineering team. So here we will be having data pipeline. So this big data engineering teams will specifically create a data pipeline over here. Okay. Now this data pipeline, one example of a data pipeline is like ETL pipeline. ETL pipeline basically means extract, transform and load. Okay. Now with respect to extract, transform and load, how do we create this entire data pipeline? Our main ta uh, task over here is to combine multiple sources. See, one is extract, transform and load, right? So when we say extract, transform, load, extract basically means combine multiple data sources, then do some kind of pre-processing and then load it in some kind of database or data source, right? So here uh, in our course also, what we have actually done, every step wherever MLOps tools is basically required. See, at the end of the day, you are creating an end-to-end -end data science project, right? But to manage that end-to-end -end data science projects, you require MLOps tool. You require MLOps tool, right? Why we specifically require this? Because everything needs to be created in a way that it should be executed in the form of pipeline. And whatever things we develop in a company, it should be production grade, right? So that we'll be able to deploy the solution, we'll be able to scale it up and all, right? So that is the reason you definitely require MLOps. It's, it's, it's a subject right now, it's in huge demand, okay? So MLOps is definitely required a lot, okay? Now here you'll be able to see that, now this ETL pipelines, right? Whenever we talk about it, it combines three main words, extract, transform and load. Extract basically means I will try to combine multiple sources data set. I will transform it. I will probably convert over here into JSON. I will do all the cleaning and then probably like I will try to load this in my another database. It can be a SQL database and all like Postgres. It can be MongoDB, right? It can be different, different database, right? Now, once I load it, you know, then this particular data from this particular data source will be used by the data scientist for executing the life cycle of a data science project. So in our course, what I have actually done is that I've also covered ETL. Okay. I've covered this topic and the framework that I've used is something called as airflow. Now, if you don't know about airflow, this is what airflow is, right? And this airflow we will be using in order to create the ETL pipeline. So everything I will talk about it, why I'm covering this because as a <clears throat> data scientist, as a MLOps engineer, you should know how an Apache airflow basically works. And we are covering this not only with respect to execution, we will cover this with respect to deployment. So if you probably go ahead and see the syllabus over here, okay? If you go ahead down and see the syllabus, here you have something called as uh, Airflow. See, Airflow ETL pipelines with Postgres and API integration in Astro Cloud and AWS. So this entire steps, you'll be able to see that we will be executing a complete end-to-end -end project with deployment. Okay, we'll take an API, we'll probably ingest the data, we'll store it in some kind of database, which is there in the cloud. Okay, so that is the reason we are using this. Now for deploying this Airflow, we will be also using something called as Astro Cloud. So this is the cloud platform we will use. This will be the cloud platform, which will, uh, this is a cloud platform, which manages the Airflow. Okay. And uh, mm, for my, for my data source, like uh, the Postgres or MongoDB, I will be hosting that in the AWS itself. Okay. So here you can understand that Airflow and Astronomer will definitely be used in the big data engineering uh, in this particular data pipeline stage. So I'm also trying to give you an idea, like how does a big data engineer work? Okay. Then coming to the next step, let's say once my data is available. Okay. Let's say my data is now available in MongoDB. So this is my data source. Okay. MongoDB. Now what I will do after this step is that from the big data engineering, after we create the ETL pipeline, it is saved in the MongoDB. Now the data scientist team, what they will do, they will ingest this particular data. Okay. Now this life cycle of a data science project will start. Now first step, which I've actually missed to specify is something called as data ingestion. So here I will go ahead and write data ingestion. Now in this data ingestion, basically what is happening from the life cycle of a data science project, the first step that executes is this one. Then we go to the next step. Now in the data ingestion, you know, uh, there may be scenarios that let's say my data source is MongoDB and I will be reading this particular data 
and I will be performing some kind of pre-processing, initial pre-processing that is required. Let's say if this is in the form of JSON, I'll try to convert this into a data frame. And, but this will be the raw clean data that I'll be having. And this data is already available in the MongoDB after the ETL pipeline. Okay. So in every project that we specifically implement, I will be having something called as data ingestion, data transformation, model to creation and hyperparameter tuning. Then you will be having model deployment and model monitoring and retraining. And here only I'll be talking about which all tools I will be specifically using. So in the data ingestion, there may be scenario that I may use MongoDB. I may use PostgreSQL, right? Or I can also have MySQL, right? So as a prerequisite, you need to have some idea about MongoDB or PostgreSQL. But anyhow, in my course also, I will be making sure to show you that how do you probably do the setup, how do you write the queries and all that will be integrated as a part of the code. Okay. Now that is about data ingestion. So here we will be using some kind of databases where we will be reading the data. Okay. Then we go to feature engineering and feature selection. We will be using some of the techniques in 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 in, uh, in our uh, projects. We have also implemented something called as model drift. Okay, I will talk about this model drift. Why it is important, and probably you'll be able to understand to understand the performance of the model or when the model needs to be retrained. Now, in feature engineering and feature selection, uh, we uh, I've not discussed much into feature engineering and feature selection because that is not the core idea. Here, our core idea is to implement an end-to-end -end data science project and try to use as much as MLOps tools to manage the entire life cycle of a data science project. And the best thing is that all this, all these are open source. All these MLOps tools are open source. Okay. So you don't have to probably pay anything as such. Yes, the cloud platform like AWS and all, you have to probably have, you'll have some amount of charges that will be going on. Okay. Then after data ingestion, feature engineering, feature selection will go. Then in model creation and hyperparameter tuning, here we will perform something called as experiment tracking. Okay. So here we are going to use MLflow. Okay. MLflow MLOps tool, which will be performing experiment tracking. Experiment tracking basically means all the experiments will be tracked, all the parameters will be tracked, all the logs will be specifically tracked. In our end-to-end uh, -end data science project, we have uh, performed grid search CV. We have also used this hyperopt. Uh, we, we, we have also used this randomized search CV. Okay. By using all these specific techniques, we will try to see that how the ML flow with the help of ML flow, we will track the experiments. And this ML flow will just not be happening in local. We will also use additionally remote repository okay to track it and the remote repository that we are going to use is something called as DAGs hub second we will also use something like AWS cloud to do the tracking okay so here if you go over here so I have not used the DAGs hub logo but uh, if I probably see ML flow this will be specifically used okay and one more thing I mentioned I forgot over here in the data ingestion state we will use a ML ops tools which is called as DVC DVC basically means data version control because we will be continuously making sure that we receive different different kind of data right and for getting a new data always it is always good that we try to version that data and for that we will be specifically using dvc okay in the model creation and uh, hyperparameter tuning we will be using ml flow along with this we'll use uh, uh, aws cloud and along with that also we'll have dax hub repo uh, repository okay so that also we'll be using and with the help of DAX Hub repository, also I'll show you how to create a data pipeline. So the, all those things are basically covered in the course syllabus. Then we go to the Docker's. With the help of Docker's, we try to containerize it. Then uh, Docker is also one MLOps tools. I will specifically say to because I need to containerize my entire application. I need to package that entire application. Then we go with the model deployment. In our curriculum, we have covered model deployment with AWS and Azure. Uh, and here also we will try to first of all convert our entire application into a docker image and then we'll run that docker image in our aws and azure so that that fundamental is also been explained in the projects okay then finally we go to the model monitoring and retraining here uh, model monitoring and retraining can be done by multiple ways but here we will be making sure that we try to create rules and we do the visualization of all the results after the deployment is happening so here uh, we uh, use something called as grafana okay Grafana. Here we will also be using Postgres. Okay. The reason of using Postgres is very simple because I want to probably showcase that once a data probably comes into the Postgres, how the visualization will happen in Grafana. Here I will be showing how you can create a visualization, the inbuilt visualization that is available in Grafana itself. Okay. Then along with that, uh, 
since your entire repository needs to be tracked we will be using git we will be using github uh, for the deployment for the automated deployment we will be using this github action okay github action and uh, this entire pipeline if you directly want to create in the cloud we can also use this SageMaker. okay so for this also we'll be able to use it where we build deploy and train our entire model okay so this is overall the entire types of mlops tools that we are specifically covering and i've spoken about in which stage we are going to use which to, uh, which tool uh, this is just gives you a comprehensive understanding that how the course is basically going to get covered and as a industrial person right you really need to know all these things because see tomorrow if you go into the industry if you know any open source you can also be probably able to work in the private uh, like uh, any paid uh, tool itself right because all the fundamentals will be same you know and that is the reason we should definitely first of all try mlops uh, uh, open source tools okay now coming to our syllabus so this is the entire detailed syllabus again uh, go ahead and try it out uh, this entire course is for 399 and uh, as usual i want to give you the best thing this is with a lot of efforts a lot of hard work dedication i put my entire heart and soul for recording this kind of content so i would suggest definitely go ahead and check it out right so yeah, this was it for my side. I hope you like this particular video. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you. Take care. And all the links will be given in the description of this particular video.